I talked with Wyatt, who'd been a friend of mine for 20 some years, and uh, he had built this first building and a, a machine that we'd never even saw before in my life, and he needed somebody to run it. And he handed me the brochure. I tied into it, started working. We had a contract to do paving stones for the Capitol building over here at Salem. And we could not get the machine to drop a layer onto a pallet without the stones falling out of the mold. And I just happened to be going back to Ohio for Christmas that year. And I went back to a plant in Cincinnati, Ohio, and they let me watch them operate their machines. And that's when I learned how the machine actually worked and that we were able to first start producing stones. The first job we ran was the Capitol Stone for the Capitol Mall at the Salem Capitol Building. And that's what got this, this business all on its feet and getting going. Uh, I first met Wyatt when I moved to Oregon from Ohio, and that was in 1981. And uh, we went to the same church and became fast friends. He sought me out. He was 19 years old at the time. He wasn't even married yet. And uh, Wyatt and I hit it off very well right away and had the same beliefs in a lot of things. And he was a man that had a compassionate heart for people. He only wanted to see people better themselves. And that connection, we just hooked together good. We did a lot of different things before he even got involved here. He was married and had children by the time he started this plant. So being a new company and not having any marketing yet, I can only remember one home show, maybe two home shows that we did while I was here the first two years and probably two months. And uh, when uh, we got done with many of the different jobs and it became winter time, there was just no work, no demand for the product yet. Uh, you got to remember that was pretty in, in the very be beginning of uh, concrete manufacturing in the United States where less than 5% of the market had been tapped. And we were just a struggling young company. So Wyatt laid me off and like I said, I had worked at a meat packing house for five years before that. It was the first week of December and it's the busiest time for a meat packing house. So I went back and asked for my job and got my job back and I worked there for another 10 years before I came back here. Said Wyatt was building another manufacturing facility, and I was excited about that. I wanted to be involved with that. And uh, I asked for the job, if I could come back, and he said yes. And like I said, I went back to Atlanta and took a machine apart, brought it back here, helped him rebuild it, uh, helped set this new manufacturing plant that we had at that time, which we don't hardly use anymore. But uh, Coming back, I told him that, that when we were done with the plan, I'd be interested in getting in sales because I had been trying to get in sales when I worked at the meatpacking house and they had hired somebody with a lot more experience and contacts. And as soon as we got that plant done, uh, Wyatt put me right into sales. And he had this idea of do-it-yourself seminars, he called them, I always called them demonstrations. And he wanted myself and my wife because we, our daughter had moved out and was going to college. And he said we were the perfect match for it because we wouldn't be leaving our families. So we hit the road, basically home shows, uh, dealerships, a lot of retail stores, anybody that would let us. And we demonstrate how to lay paving stones from the gravel up. Part of the criteria was show everything don't leave anything out. We want everybody to know exactly what they're getting into. Did that for eight years. Some of the best memories I have in sales. Uh, it was a lot of hard work, but met a lot of people. Some of our dealers, the relationships I made with them. I didn't. I didn't give them a handshake when I showed up at, at their place. I always gave them a hug. And that's how. We became very good friends with a lot of people. It was very successful. I've always appreciated Western Interlock's look at sales. Everybody needs to be satisfied, even when the customer's unhappy. 
the rule here at Western Interlock and then Wyatt himself has laid it down that nobody goes away feeling that they have been cheated. We will do everything in our power that when they get done, they feel like we've gone beyond what a normal sales or a company would do. Uh, we have a list of things that, and I wish I could quote them, but I can't, that we try to make sure that the customer is never dissatisfied and do whatever it takes to make that customer satisfied. And I've always appreciated that. I don't have an owner saying, you can't do this, or you can't give this, or you can't discount this. But if that's what it takes to make the customer satisfied, I've always appreciated uh, Western Earlocks and Wyatt's position on always make the customer satisfied, make it feel like they've been treated fairly. And there are people who try to take advantage of it, but at the same time, most people are surprised at our customer service and what we're willing to do to bring about a satisfied customer. And that's the truth.